Okay, what is going on CypherX advanced YouTubers? Welcome back to the CypherX YouTube page. As always, if you're interested in learning about cryptocurrencies, commodities, indices, foreign exchange, please go ahead and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. In today's video breakdown, I'm going to cover some technical analysis on two leveraged positions that I'm currently floating in, one on XRP, a sell position, and one a buy position on Ethereum. I'm gonna break them down for you in extreme detail. Again, not covering all the methodologies that we teach, but you guys are really going to enjoy this breakdown. It is going to give you clarity in the markets, especially if you are a beginner or an intermediate trader who can't seem to find any stability on the internet from all of these uh, you know, gurus, these YouTube mentors, these Twitter tweeters, all right? So again, blessings to you guys. Really do appreciate you all for returning here. The other day I tweeted on my Twitter. You guys can go and follow me if you do, please. It is C Demanicor. Um, You guys check this out. All right. I said XRP needs a sustainable break and hold above the 85 cent region to confirm bullish momentum, or we will most likely see a significant pullback in price. I am looking at the 72 cent psychological level for my first bearish targets. All right. And I tweeted this out to the general public on March 31st. Now let's head over to the XRP price action charts where I'm currently floating in a trade right now looking for a risk to reward ratio of about one to five, currently floating about one and a half percent in profit. My stops are at break even and I'm currently just letting this trade run. So before we jump into Ethereum, let's get over the sell scenario that I placed on XRP. Very easily understandable if you guys have been studying the methodologies that we teach here on the YouTube channel, focusing on liquidity, focusing on understanding that the bank and institutions institutions piggyback off of previous areas where banking institutions either bought or sold from and also focusing on the manipulation window prior to every single session. This trade breakdown goes into extreme detail surrounding those things in particular, right? We're looking for liquidity. We're looking for manipulation windows to come and get violated. We're looking for the market makers to pretty much psych retail traders out, psych the retail herd out by setting retail trading traps. And then us, right, being CyberX advanced students trading against that methodology, all right? All of that formulated into this strategy allowed me to capitalize so far on a one to one and a half risk to reward ratio, looking for a one to five to come into fruition. Most likely, if we do get the drop down into the 76 to 78 cent region, I will close this trade. I'm not gonna be greedy. So make sure that you guys smash that like button. Without further ado, let's jump into this breakdown. So I had mentioned to you guys on the Twitter that we need a sustainable break above the 85 cent region in order to see any bullish momentum. As you guys can see on March 31st, the day that I tweeted that, we got a significant meltdown below that psychological level. So once we had this momentum pick up on XRP, as you guys can see, right, the banking institutions, private investors, whale entities are the only people who have the amount of money, the amount of volume, right, to move the market from A to B this fast. So once they move the market from A to B this fast and smashed through this psychological level, all I was thinking to myself, okay, sellers have picked up momentum and seller interest is more involved in XRP price action than bullish momentum. Now we retraced all the way back up to that 85 cent psychological level. Now, this is where things get interesting and why we were able to capitalize on this move to the downside on XRP. Let's pay attention to what it is that I teach you guys on the YouTube channel about manipulation windows, okay? If you guys haven't caught that drift, make sure that you go back and watch previous YouTube videos. But I mentioned to you guys in previous videos that the manipulation window takes place prior to every single session from around 6 a.m. to 8.30 in that general vicinity prior to every single session open, right? Where we have impatient traders in the form of buyers and sellers. And we also have people who are willing to buy and sell price action in the form of buy stops and sell stops in this general vicinity who are impatient and cannot wait for market price action to play out and give them a overall directional bias of whatever trading session they are currently trading in. So we see here prior to the New York session that we are currently operating in right now, okay, we had two New York sessions. This New York session isn't too relevant because this New York session set trend line liquidity. We'll get into that in just one second. But this area of interest right here for this New York session, let's look at the manipulation window. We see that the manipulation window in the form of early sellers or people who had buy stops above these highs or this double top formation right here. I'll just go ahead and highlight that for you all. We have a double top potential formation right here. And then if you don't wanna look at it that way, we even have a potential double top formation there where we can see retail resistance, right, in the form of this M formation existed in this manipulation window. The significance about this manipulation window is to see if liquidity in the form of retail money exists in this window or not. And if the bank and institutions don't target this money, most likely at a later date they will. From this manipulation window, what started to take place? 
trend line liquidity where we can see in the form of retail money trend line followers were taking sell positions from the touches of these trend lines so liquidity existed all above these highs not only that but we see that the market makers failed to grab the liquidity from early sellers prior to the new york session so this was an area of interest for us and what did it also have to link up with the psychological level of 85 cents which i'd mentioned to you guys on twitter if we do not break and hold above that most likely we are going to see a significant pullback in price on xrp to the downside okay coming into this new york session Again, what it is that we focus here at CyberX before we capitalize on buy or sell positions is a grab of liquidity, a rejection of a psychological level, and an attack potentially on retail money. Well, if you align all of those things that I teach you guys on the YouTube channel, they come into fruition to the T. We see areas of liquidity that the bank and institutions might want to grab that they had not grabbed yet. Coming into this New York session, we see them align with the 85 cent psychological level and this manipulation window to the T. We can see that this high, right, in the form of retail resistance, if I go ahead and I kind of just manipulate this drawing here just a little bit and we turn it into retail resistance, we can imagine that there was liquidity that existed all all above these highs in the form of what? If I go ahead and hit the replay tool right here, imagine you're a baby pip reader, right? You read baby pips or you have some guru on YouTube that's teaching you support resistance methodologies. This right here to a retail trader is a resistance trading dream where we see the market pushed back up into this area of quote unquote resistance and so many people would be taking leveraged sell positions from this high. The bank and institutions know that, okay? They're taking sell positions from here and they're willing to buy at these highs if price surpasses the 85 cent psychological level. So there is what that exists above these highs? Liquidity, okay? Same thing here. The market pushed back into this general vicinity and people were most likely taking leveraged sell positions. Once the market pushed them a little bit into profit, they were most likely, if they were smart traders, moving their stop losses to break even. The bank and institutions know that liquidity exists above these highs. So what did we do here at CyberX? We waited to see if the market could come up into this general area of liquidity and reject a psychological level in this zone and what did we get to the t we got a rejection of the 85125 psychological level because we are trading xrp against the united states dollar we're going to be utilizing the quarter methodology so here i'll show you guys okay here we have the 8125 psychological level i'll go ahead and put that on for you all and watch price action come up into this general vicinity and reject it. It fails to hold and close a bullish break above it and prints a bearish engulfing candlestick and completely reverses back to the downside and breaks and comes and attack all of these higher lows and trend line liquidity. We can go ahead and imagine now retail traders are taking sell positions from these highs. We also have an area of manipulation, again, the manipulation window that was not attacked. So we have liquidity above these highs. Now, on the flip side, we have liquidity in the form of retail trend line buyers that exist beneath these lows. So this is a clear liquidity trap by the market makers manipulating price action. Again, proving my theories to you all that the market makers are in control of these markets at all time. So here you guys can see them setting up trend line liquidity. Then they come, they make a run on the liquidity from the manipulation window. Right here is where we entered into price action. Look if we zoom in, okay? Immediately, once we tapped into the 85125 psychological level, we see a bullish candlestick. Immediately following, a bearish candlestick engulfed the bullish candlestick. If this was a valid bullish candlestick, what would have happened? What would have happened, guys? A higher low, higher high, higher low formation would have formed. What did we get? What did we get that confirmed this entry for us? Can anybody answer that question watching this? We got a lower high, lower low, lower high formation okay right here this validated our bearish entry why because if the market was going to continue higher it would have created a higher low and created a higher high it failed to do that what did it do it created the definition of a downtrend after grabbing liquidity which we've identified and rejecting a psychological level okay now what do we do we see the price action of xrp come and attack all of the buyers beneath these lows and that solidified this trade entry for us which is now currently floating one and a half percent in profit absolutely beautiful again we're looking to capitalize on the one to five risk reward ratio for this trade 
potentially looking to see if XRP can come down to the 79 cent to 78 cent psychological level. My stops with this trade on a leveraged account, I trade with Osprey FX. I'm not going to recommend them as a broker. I personally just like them because their uh, customer service is absolutely outstanding in my opinion. You know, you're actually able to talk to a live agent if you have any actual questions of them. Um, but my stops are moved to break even on this leverage position. Currently, again, like I said, floating 1.5% in profit. I have not taken parcels on this trade yet. If we do tap into the 80 cent psychological level, I will take parcels on this trade and trail my stop loss. However, because this trade is at break even, if it does reverse and come and move against me, guess what? I'm not butthurt about it. I traded the strategy to the T, which is trading against the retail herd, against retail methodologies, and really understanding and being intuitive with price action one within itself, all right? So this was the XRP trade. If you guys like that breakdown, make sure that you go ahead and smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's a lot of individuals who are watching this content who are not subscribed. It is free to do so, and it helps boost the YouTube algorithm. Now, let's go into the Ethereum buy position that we are currently floating in, okay? We are looking for this trade to come now that we're floating in this trade and stops have been moved to break even, we're looking for them to come and attack the manipulation window from Asia session, right? If I go ahead and I highlight from around 8.30 a.m. Asia session to around 6 a.m. Asia session, that's just this general vicinity. We can see here the manipulation window exists in the form of early sellers where we can see liquidity in the form of a double top pattern potentially exists above these highs. Can we see Ethereum come up and attack this area of liquidity? Okay, now how are we able to capitalize on a buy position here? Understanding the piggyback methodology, which is another methodology that I've attempted to teach you guys on this YouTube channel. Not only understanding manipulation in the form of the manipulation window prior to every single session, but understanding that the banking institutions like to piggyback off of previous areas where the banking institutions prior to the current trading session that we're in either bought or sold from. So utilizing that methodology, let's just focus because we're New York session traders on where New York session purchase price action from on Ethereum. So if we look at this trading session on New York, we see that the banking institutions bought from this general vicinity, right? Order block traders would highlight this general region and say, okay, well, look, I'm going to be looking for buy positions if we can come back into this order block. Same thing here. They're looking at this general vicinity as an order block area. However, us here at CypherX, we know that the banking institutions don't take trades from order blocks. What do they take trades from? What have I taught you guys so far on this YouTube channel? that the banking institutions like to take trades from what? Psychological levels, okay? So if we see here, this is the psychological level 3410.00. If I go ahead and I extend that all the way over, we can see that it aligns with this general vicinity where the New York session buyers purchased from the previous day. Now, I also mentioned to you guys that every single trading session usually likes to take two main positions in the form of sells or buys and that the rest of price action is either manipulation or sideways movements. So as we can see, these are the two main general areas where the banking institutions and the private investors for the previous New York session bought from in order to move price in their favor. We see a massive run to the upside, a pullback, and then we see another massive run to the upside that creates a new higher high in the form of price action. So we highlighted these two general areas. Fast forwarding over here to this New York session where we caught this buy scenario, let's go ahead and zoom in to current price action and see what it is that we see. Very easy to understand. Again, paying attention to manipulation windows, paying attention to liquidity in the market, and seeing how price action reacts to those liquidity regions. Well, looking at this price action here, number one, highlighting the manipulation window from around 8.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. New York or Eastern Standard Time. We can see here that the market makers manipulated early buyers and early sellers, okay? So all we had coming into this trade was understanding that they came to attack early buyers or people who were willing to sell in the form of sell stops if price did come beneath these lows, okay? In the form of, again, a retail trading pattern, double bottom formation, okay? As you guys can see here, immediately out of the manipulation window, the market makers came and attacked this general vicinity or this area of liquidity where we can imagine people had leveraged buy positions prior to the 8.30 a.m. window and people also had sell stops that needed to be activated who were willing to sell from these lower prices, okay? Now, how have I taught you guys to identify if this is a proper or false bearish move? How? Can you guys answer that? Well, let's zoom into now the two-minute chart. 
showing you guys this price action, what can we see? Immediately following same scenario that we saw on XRP, once we dipped into the psychological level because we're trading Ethereum against the United States dollar, let's get into the nitty gritty surrounding psychological levels. Would you guys look at that? This is the 3412.25 psychological level of Again, trading the quarter theory, we see that as soon as Ethereum pushes down into this psychological level, it immediately reverses with a bullish candlestick. And what's the significance about our entry? Can anybody pay attention to detail? Instead of creating a new low, <clears throat> Instead of creating a new low, we create a higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high formation, which solidified this trade entry for us. And again, what were we trading against? We were trading against retail methodology. We see a double bottom here. We also see a double bottom pattern here in this general vicinity. Trading against retail trading patterns. Now, if we align where the bank and institutions bought from the previous day, just extending this arrow all the way out, we can see that this area of quote unquote support held and the banking institutions put in another order on Ethereum. Where did they target? Where did they target? Again, proving my theory and my methodologies to you guys that I'm teaching you on YouTube, or at least attempting to wake you all up, right? We see that they came to target money above the highs in the manipulation window, okay? Now in the form of people who sold in the manipulation window or in the form of people who have buy stops above these highs in the manipulation window from people who are willing to buy at higher prices, either way, it is liquidity in the market. When you can understand these methodologies, you can capitalize on buy and sell scenarios every single day in the market, but that does not mean every single trading day is time for you to trade these markets. Know when to sit on your hands, know when to participate in the market and understand manipulation and psychological levels in this market is key to your survival. Not just thinking that Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoins, XRP, Casper, all these tokens are always bullish. Really understanding the nitty gritty of price action, what the banking institutions, the private investors are doing, which is targeting retail trading money, targeting people who are less informed in the market, the transfer of money from weak hands to smart hands, or the less informed to the more informed, all right? Blessings to you guys all. I hope that you enjoyed this video breakdown. I really do appreciate the love and the support. You know, this YouTube channel is here for the individuals who are really looking to excel in their trading career. I'm not here to please people. I'm not here to give you guys bullish predictions like all of these other YouTube channels. And I'm definitely not here to fill your guys' head with a bunch of hopium. I'm here to give you guys clear cut clarity in the market so that way you all can execute trades profitably okay, by utilizing these methodologies. Hopefully you can soak up this information and you can apply it to your trading. And if not, and you're having a hard time applying what it is that I'm teaching you all, you know, skimming the surface on the YouTube channel, the link is in the description down below for the mentorship. Take it upon yourself and really learn technical analysis so you can stop getting babied around in this market, okay, by people who have no idea what they're doing. As always, be cognizant, be aware. Blessings to you guys all. I will see you all in the next video breakdown.